Were you scared of saying I love you and what do you think love is? How to forgive your past self and embrace starting over. How has dating helped you with your body image? Greetings internet, welcome back to another video on my channel. Welcome to my big comfy couch. Did anyone watch that show growing up? Like the big comfy couch? I was trying to explain it to Jack the other day because I was like, is this just an American thing? Or is this an everywhere thing? Like if you know, you know, the big comfy couch and she would like pull things out of the couch. Well, this is my big comfy couch, and today we are doing a Q&A video, an extra special love Valentine's Day themed q and I'll be answering personal questions about my relationship and my experience dating. I'll be answering honestly so many other things as well, just like self-love questions, anything love related because this week is Valentine's Day week. And although many people could say that Valentine's Day is a Hallmark holiday, which I honestly don't disagree with, I do think it is really amped up as this Hallmarky sort of thing. But that being said, I love leaning into it. Like I love dressing in the red and the pink and putting the lipstick on and wearing the heart-shaped earrings and getting the roses and the little heart-shaped cakes and things. Like I'm okay with it. I will fully feed into the Hallmark holiday of it all. So you will find me participating. There's nothing I love more than keeping it real, and that is what I intend on doing in today's video. And that being said, today's sponsor is BetterHelp Online Therapy. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video, sponsoring another video. I freaking love you guys, not only because I use BetterHelp, but I just love what they stand for. I love how they've made therapy so accessible and so customizable. Personally, I get super nervous when it comes to being on camera with a therapist. I tried it that way. I've tried in-person therapy and it all just kind of, it either stresses me out or it's just too tricky to schedule. And I feel like it ends up being this thing that I dread and not this thing where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get things off my chest. So my preferred method of BetterHelp Online Therapy is the chat method, the messaging. Everyone is different. They have multiple different approaches on their website and you can get connected with a therapist after taking a short quiz. It's literally so short and to the point, you can get matched with a therapist who is licensed to listen, to help you. And honestly, it shouldn't be this shameful thing. I think therapy, it honestly, is extremely empowering, especially during this month of love. I feel like therapy and investing in therapy is the ultimate form of self-love. And the best part is you don't have to leave your couch. You just take the quiz, get matched. If you decide you don't like your therapist, you don't vibe with them, you can switch easily anytime. And I could just go on and on. But anyway, if you guys want to get started, at least try out the quiz. Check out the link on the screen and down below for 10% off your first month of BetterHelp Online Therapy so you can see what all the hype is about. And with that, thank you to BetterHelp and let's get on with the video. I have so many things to talk to you about, okay? So the first question I'm going to answer is how to stop feeling like you're going to be alone forever. I'm 27. So the person that wrote this in is 27 and is asking, how to not or how to stop feeling like you're going to be alone forever and this struck a chord with me when i first read it because i mean for those who don't know anything about me i'm 28 and i am in my very first relationship ever i've never been in a serious relationship like never even been in a relationship like never been asked to be anyone's girlfriend never been asked to be exclusive like never crossed the threshold of any of those conversations before and hadn't until, I guess I was 27 when it happened. Yeah, yeah, so I, I met Jack on Hinge in May of 2023. What year is it? 2023, I met Jack on Hinge like the fourth, third or fourth week of May. We went on our first date June 15th and we're pretty much inseparable since then, like after that, up until end of July when he asked me to be official and he just asked me straight up to be his girlfriend. We were out in the Hamptons. That's kind of like the short version of the story. I'll probably get into more specifics like later on in this video because there's questions about it, but, but to answer the question, so I felt the exact same way. And I honestly, I, I was thinking to myself, actually while I was doing my hair, I was like, how am I going to approach a lot of these questions? Because I remember being a single girl and you know, for literally 27 years of my life as well. And I'd listen to people say similar things like, oh, just hang in there. 
don't worry when you least expect it that's when they'll they'll arrive and it's like just this effortless like hallmarky thing here's the thing about that it's true but also untrue because at no point did i ever stop trying okay i never stopped trying and i think that that it definitely like caused some sadness at points but it also made me feel better about it all because i'm like at least it isn't for a lack of trying like if there's one thing about me and my life like you know i have my my positives and my negatives as everyone does like things i'm really good at and things i'm really terrible at but one thing i'm very good at is resiliency like i will pick myself up dust myself off and keep going and i don't know what it is about me or where that came from i really don't know i think i just knew one thing to be true and that is with dating it is a numbers game the more dates you go on the higher the probability that you will meet someone that checks your boxes or just feels right i mean it's just it of course you could go on like one first date like you've never dated you go on one date you fall in love you get married like you know and that is that but for most of us <laughs> it takes time it takes figuring out what you want and so that being said it is a numbers game every date is either love or a lesson okay every person you start to see and have a, a situationship with is either love or a lesson okay like you have to see it that way it's like oh you know this person on paper seemed like everything i want but then i realized oh i really i need a guy that makes time for me or i need a guy that has a good relationship with his family and it's like you start to realize these things and it becomes this you know satisfying thing where every every day you feel like you're getting closer and that is how it started to feel for me you know right before i met jack i had gone on a series of very unsuccessful dates i actually like gotten this weird funk with them where i was like oh this should be working i was like this should be working something's wrong and i kept thinking like what is wrong with me what is wrong with me like why can't i just let someone in why can't i just settle and i didn't see it as settling i don't think like settle because you think of someone settling it doesn't sound very attractive or very like romantic but i was like maybe my standards are too high maybe i i need to settle like maybe i do maybe i'm like just being too picky and that i met jack and i was like oh never mind <laughs> no this is it and i do want to clarify actually like hold the horses on that one because i met jack we went on our first date the boxes were checked like for the most part i was like he is attractive he's funny he picked a good place like all the you know the superficial boxes that one could check on a first date were checked and i was like oh this is i'm enjoying myself this is great whatever it did take me some time, like, and I'm talking months, for me to chill the fuck out enough, to let go enough, to let myself love him. And I just want to say that because I feel like sometimes, like, you know, what I even just said myself, like, oh, I went on a slew of bad or okay dates, like fine dates, good dates, whatever. And then I met Jack and everything changed. And I want to kind of just take that narrative and like pull it apart a little bit because yes, everything has changed in my life now that I've met Jack and I love him and it's been only, I know, six-ish months, like almost seven months, but that's how I feel right now and I'm just telling my story how it, how it is, how it is as of right now. So I just want to be truly honest because for a while I thought something was totally wrong with me, that I wasn't able to open up enough to let myself say things like I love you or you know even feel that because i was protecting myself i've been on my own for 28 now years and f fulfilling my own needs and being my own support system granted i've had friends and family that have been tremendously helpful in that but when it comes down to you know living alone in new york city i was doing a lot of stuff on my own and giving a lot of love to myself in the process which was great but I always longed for someone. I longed for a partner, that's what I wanted, and that's what I was looking for. You do the things that everyone tells you to do. You lean into your friends, you lean into your family, you lean into your interests to distract you. Sure, yes, that's what I did. I listened to those people and that's what I did. But of course, still a little part of me, like this little like hollow part of me was like, I want love, I want a partner in crime, I want, that's what I want, that's what I want so badly, I'm craving it. And it's something you can't, it doesn't go away, 
you know, you distract yourself, but it doesn't go away. So I know that feeling, I, and I know how it feels to also feel like that is never gonna happen. And you're like, I'm gonna be alone forever because I am the problem. Either like how I was feeling when I was seeing those few guys before I met Jack, and I was like, I'm the problem. I just need to settle. Like this is, something's wrong with me. I am way too picky. I'm way too critical or I'm way, not just even of them, but of myself. Like I don't think I'm deserving. Like there's all these things that was really holding me back. And I guess what I'm trying to say is don't settle, but don't let that mindset of not settling and being picky hold you back from trying. Going on the apps and going on dates with people that maybe you're not entirely sure about. Like Jack, the way that we met on Hinge, which I've told this story in my last vlog we told this story, but just like top line short version of this story. I liked Jack, he messaged me, he spelled my name wrong. I then was like, what a dummy, not gonna respond. He then followed up a week later. We probably exchanged, well he followed up and corrected himself and we had like a funny little banter and then I wanna say we probably exchanged like two messages, two messages, he asked for my number, he texted me and then the next text was, when are you free? I told him when I was free. I sandwiched, I was actually so out of steam at this point, like so out of gas with dating, that I was like, I'll schedule it after dinner. Like I'll schedule our date after dinner, whatever. It's funny, cause like the, I put the least amount of effort into my appearance, like I was wearing jeans, like I hardly ever wear jeans, you guys know that. And I remember thinking like, okay, I'll just like get in, get out, go. And it turned out being something that I will, I will remember forever. I will remember of this person forever. This time last year, if I knew this time this year, I'd be filming a video saying like, oh, I have this boyfriend of six months. Like I would be shook to my core because I was just under the impression that I was a late, a late bloomer, always have been, always will be, and will just probably be the cool aunt, which I, there's nothing wrong with that. But I just, I really thought that. I thought I wanted love, but I thought it wasn't going to happen for me because I have too much wrong with me, or I just, I don't know, I have too high of standards. Like, there was, I was always, it was always a self deprecating reason. So, I would just say silence those voices because they're not gonna help you. It's just gonna make you feel shitty about yourself. And, you know, don't compare your story to all of your friends. Things do happen when you least expect it, okay? And I know I hate that, I hate that, but it's true because I didn't expect it. I was gonna take a break from dating after, like right before meeting Jack, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go on this last date. I literally said it on our podcast, Match Made. I said, like, after this, I'm gonna take a break. And I guess I kind of did take a break <laughs> with Hinge because <laughs> I deleted the app like pretty soon after. I actually waited for Jack to delete the app and tell me he deleted the app and then I did. Because, I mean, that'll get in, we'll get into a whole other question with this, but I didn't know how to act. Like being in a relationship, because I'd never done it, I didn't know how to act. Next question, which I actually hadn't thought about before it was asked, how has dating helped you with your body image? I'm no stranger to answering body image questions because I've had this deep-seated insecurity with my body since I was a teenager. I think that's kind of where it like begins in most of us and I just, I lived with it ever since. Like I, no matter what I do, and I, I think it just, I've said this before, it ebbs and flows, like the way you feel about your body and the confidence you have, it ebbs and it flows. And there's some days where I'm like, wow, I love my body and I'm so strong and powerful and I just, I look good in this outfit. And then there's other days, other days where I wanna hide and I'm like, I'm insecure. And like, it just, it ebbs and it flows. But I will say when it comes to dating, a lot of times it, it kind of just made my insecurities with my body flare up. If I, for example, went on a date with someone and I, you know, thought it was a good date, got home and they never talked to me again, never reached out to me again, I would think on those, those days where the ebb was kind of down or the flow was down and I was like having a really bad body image day, I'd be like, oh, it's because my body, it's because I looked fat in that outfit and that's why. And I would let myself believe that which is terrible, okay? But if you're like me, you know that this, these feelings, they happen and you can't control it. And especially when you're already feeling kind of down and deflated because someone goes to you, then of course, you're just gonna add fuel to the fire of self-deprecation and 
convince yourself, oh, it's because, like I always need to have a reason, which is, that's just kind of who I am. Like I always wanna know the why and the reason for things. Like I was one of those little kids that would just be like, why, why mom, why? Why is the sky blue, why? And I, I feel that way now, which has helped me in like my business pursuits and my podcasts and stuff. But when it comes to dating, I'd be like, oh, why did that guy ghost me? Or why, why am I not enough for them? Or why did they give me this, send me the text saying they're not interested, even though it seemed like they were like, why, 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 why? And a lot of times it was just the easiest answer was, oh, because I need to lose 15 pounds which is really terrible. I've heard it said, and I know this to be true, that another person cannot help you heal completely from insecurities, from things that plague you and follow you throughout your life. Like you need to either work on them in therapy or deal with those demons on your own and no one can fully like save you or help you fully, fully, fully. But I have to say, like, you know how they say, it's like, I wish, like, as the person speaking, like, in a song or whatever, like, I wish you would see yourself the way that I see you. And I look at some of my friends that have the same insecurities that I do about their bodies, and I'm like, I wish that you could see yourself the way that I see you. With Jack, and the way that he looks at me, and the way that he praises how I, how I, mostly how I am, but also, like, he'll give me a compliment about how I look, which I appreciate. I start to believe what he says. Like I start to believe the things that he says because he says it so genuinely and so often that it really does silence, at least for that moment, my critics, like my, my inner critic. It, I'm starting to believe what he sees. Like I'm starting to see myself how he sees me which I never thought would be possible. And I remember like growing up and watching The Notebook, okay? Like one of those kinds of movies, The Notebook specifically, where it's like the scene where they're both just like getting naked in front of each other. They like strip in front of each other. And like, I never thought I'd have the confidence to do that. Like I'd always feel like I need to turn the light off or this is like so vulnerable of me to say this, but it's just, I feel like a lot of people feel this way. You know, like I would feel like I, could only like be naked with someone in the dark because I was just so concerned about how I look and like it would ruin the moment for me of just knowing that I'm like so visible and I don't, you know, and I have these insecurities and with him, it's like, I feel so comfortable now and I know that he, he all he sees is, is good, good things <laughs> when he looks at me. And it's just really nice and I, and I, again that's not the cure okay like there's a lot of work that i need to do and that i will do for probably for the rest of my life to silence or attempt to silence the voices or just make the other ones louder that i am so much more than my body my body is the least exciting and least interesting part about me it's like there i know these things but i can't help but feel really deeply insecure about how i look some days and i have to say those days are made a lot easier by having a loving partner that just hypes me up <laughs> dating is a very brave thing like going on dates okay is, is a very brave thing because it allows if things don't go well or you know there's stress involved it it gives your deepest insecurities the floor to be even deeper and to shine in a terrible way. I have to say the benefits of like when it goes right, when it works out, outweigh all of that. Like all of the sadness that I experienced in the last five years of putting myself out there, I don't even remember it. Like I don't remember it, it's a thing of the past because now I'm, I'm in a relationship where I feel like it's all been so worth it. Like just so worth it. You know, anyway, okay. Hope that answers that question. Okay, how to forgive your past self and embrace starting over. There are many things that I did or have done in my life, in high school, in college, things that, you know, after I'd done them, I had just a deep regret. Deep regret, felt used, felt dirty, felt silly, felt like, all those like terrible feelings that like give you that pit in your stomach. Like I felt all of those emotions at some point. And I will say like, of course, time heals. Like over time, you start to even forget that you've even done those things. But I feel like just a general 
rule of thumb when it comes to how to pick yourself up after feeling like you did something silly or something that makes you feel dirty you know those things like that just don't make you feel like you're your best self if you maybe have like a had a terrible weekend of like you drank too much and you did something stupid and just how to pick yourself up after that is to do things that make you feel proud of yourself for me it's i create i make art i do ipad doodles and create things for people that make people happy i will make a flower arrangement i creating really helps me workout classes really help me like going and sweating and feeling strong anything i can do to make myself feel proud of myself like oh i'm leaning into those qualities that i know are like my shining qualities that i'm proud to say that i have lean into those things and lean into them more and if it's something that that kind of sticks and won't go away like just you just keep doing the things, fill your life with so many things that you're proud of that the things that you're not so proud of, those memories, don't have any space. That is my advice for that. And therapy helps. Therapy also helps. Okay, question, there's two, asked by the same person. Were you scared of saying I love you and what do you think love is? We started dating in July, July 29th. When did, I actually made, it's so funny, I made a note in my phone when he told me he loved me because I, I didn't want to forget. So the evening of September 16th, that is when Jack told me he loved me. He said it first. We were at the bar drinking martinis at Joseph Leonard's, this amazing restaurant in the West Village. And he just like looked at me and just said it. And I, leading up to this point, I knew that I'd felt that way. Like I knew that I loved him but I didn't know how I was going to say it because I'd never said it. And I didn't know if I was like, do I really feel this way? I'm like, I think I do, but do I? Like, I, I don't know. And then when he said it, it was like something in my chest burned and I was in a good way. And I was like, yep, yep, confirmed, confirmed. I love him. And that's, it just kind of clicked and I don't know. It, it just felt like this warm, fuzzy, like kind of shivery, weird feeling of like, oh my God, I love you too. And I said that, I said, I love you too. And after that moment, like that moment was like very special and I felt that. But for a bit afterwards, I was like, oh, it feels so weird on my mouth to say it. It feels very foreign. It feels very strange. And it wasn't that I wasn't feeling it. It just was I, I wasn't used to saying it and I wasn't used to even feeling it. And he said immediately after he said it to me, he was like, you don't need to say it back. Like, cause I, I think that that's a very like, it's a very pressure filled moment. And the worst thing is saying it when you don't, when it, or not the worst thing, but like something that would have been not so great was if I'd said it and didn't fully feel it. And it kind of like ruined the moment for me to force me to be sped up in my process. But no, I knew like we had started dating in July officially so august september two months two ish more than two months ish yeah like three months ish um yeah and I, I think every couple goes at a different speed but you start to figure it out pretty soon there's just things that they do and you're like god i love them you know or you don't and it's okay if you don't but that being said again because i don't want to sugarcoat things of course like i love jack i do but I feel like there's been points through the relationship so far that I've tried to sabotage it. Like I have tried to self-sabotage and just sabotage the relationship because I would panic over there not being anything wrong. And let me explain this. So, you know, of course, like every experience I've had romantic before this point, I was either with someone who didn't want to be with me or like kind of hanging on by a thread. It was a physical sort of relationship or just in a nutshell, toxic or just lackluster. And just, you know, I was in my own head so much. Okay. And all of the past experiences I've had, I've always been very self aware and like just freaking out and haven't felt like the person has ever given me the communication that I needed to be reassured that I'm doing a good job or that they feel the same way. And like the communication just has been absent from every previous romantic tangle I've ever been in. With Jack, that is not the case at all because he's extremely communicative about his emotions and his every thought. Like he 
keeps me in the loop fully. I've known how he spelt from the very start and it hasn't been murky at all. And so because everything's been so clear cut and so perfect and just so great, I've caught myself thinking or feeling, it's not even a thought, it's a feeling of like panic, like danger, danger. Like where are the threats? I can't see the threats. I don't know where they are. Like where are they? Am I not seeing them? And because with past people I've gotten involved with it's been so obvious what their faults were and like where the danger was like oh danger this person like is non-committal danger this person doesn't want kids or like those are just examples but like there's been clear dangers or like things that i'm like i'm not compatible with you but with him there's none because i it's good it's right so then my body it's like a physical response of being like where where's the thing that's wrong like i need to find it because that's just like a survival instinct of human beings to like always sense the threats and know where they are and because everything's going great i'm like why are we not fighting what why you know and it's been really funny honestly to notice that and to catch myself thinking that like trying to identify something that he does or something that in our relationship that's wrong when i take a step back and I'm like, no, 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 that's really not wrong. That's really right. Why am I doing this? And it's just self-preservation, I think, and just reacting or acting like I've always acted when now things are different because I'm actually in a loving, solid relationship. And I know it's only been six months and I just, I want to keep that top of mind for people because I know people are going to bring it up and be like, but Katie, it's six months. I don't know, I've learned a lot about myself in six months. So, to answer the question though, what do you think love is? What do I think love is? People have said that love feels like coming home. You know, after a trip. And I, I really agree with that feeling, or that concept, that love just feels like coming home, or it feels like you know, getting to lay down after running a marathon. It's just like you, you just, you can just be. And it's, it's something that I just, I, yeah, I never knew. I never, I'd never felt this. I'd never known. It's just like, you don't need to, like with guys in the past, like I remember like texting or talking and having to like hold back. Like I would type something and be like, oh no, I'm coming on too strong or like I'm being too naggy or like, I don't have to ever think that with Jack because I can just be exactly who I am and he loves me for it. Like it's just like we we fit because the things that like I am extremely planned and methodical and like need things to be laid out and itinerized and Jack's very like go with the flow, very crafty, very like we will make it work. He's always reminded, he's like we will make it work and he's spontaneous will be at the grocery store and I have my grocery list and we're making a specific thing and he'll just grab a box of brownie mix and say we're gonna throw this in and it, we just compliment each other and that's just how it should be I've realized because I didn't know that but now I do so I think that's what love is it's like you know one with the grocery list and one with the spontaneous plan to get brownies like I <laughs> of course we have our flaws we have moments where i'm like get away from me like i'm pissy i'm in a mood or like i need alone time and of course like it's not all sunshines and rainbows every day but like even on those days i'm like there's no one i'd rather be with you know and i also feel like with him it's not like i'm in it's not like intoxicating to the point where I've cut off all my friends and my family and my interests like I still have retained who I am and what is important to me but I just have this like extra special thing too you know it's like sorry to be sappy if I'm being sappy just tell me okay your favorite type of non-dinner date so this is actually a really good idea for people who are going on dates or people that are in like long-term relationships that I heard from a friend that I'm going to do. So I haven't done this, but I can imagine it'd be good and I'm planning on executing on it. So I really wanna go on a ceramics painting date. You can go to these places, they have them in every major city, like they're under different names and such, but essentially they have all these pre-made, pre-molded like clay things, like plates and bowls and cups and you go in and you paint them and then they fire them and then you have this beautiful memory and even if it's like the paint the paint job isn't as beautiful it's like you still have this perfectly functional mug 
Like I've done it both, or I've done the opposite of that where you have to go in and like mold your stuff and then you go back and you paint it and it just like takes a lot longer. This is a little bit more stress-free. And I feel like it'd be such a cute date, like go and paint a mug together and then you have a memory of that date and you have an excuse to see the person again if this is like a third or whatever because you have to go pick it up. You can go pick it up together and then, I don't know, cook, make dinner at home and use them. And I don't know, there's just so many possibilities and it, it's a good like sober date where you don't need to be at a bar and it's creative and I feel like it's just, you would laugh so hard. So, is continuing a casual fling getting in my way of finding a relationship? I would ask yourself how casual of a fling is it to you? Like, is it something where you're kind of secretly hoping it's become something bigger and like you're gonna close yourself off to potential others because you were so invested in this casual fling. Like you call it a casual fling, maybe because the other person wants it to be casual or you just, maybe you live in different cities or I don't know, there's like other reasons for it. Like, do you want it to be more than casual? Because if so, you gotta cut that off if you have any hope of exploring other opportunities because that's gonna be holding you back. If not, if it's just like a casual thing, like I, you know, when I was dating one person, I would be also dating another person. Then not seriously, not like with a label, but I think it's perfectly fine to play the field and to be going on dates with different people until you figure out what you want. And then of course you're courteous to those other people and say, sorry, I'm like, you know, I've gone in a different direction or I'm just not interested in you, that sort of thing. I think that's perfectly ethical as long as there's no labels. With this, I don't know. I feel like it just, I would ask yourself how much of you are you giving to this casual fling? Like, is there enough for you to see other people? Is there enough of you left to have the energy to see other people, to go on other dates and stuff like that? So, I don't know, I think it can be done, but just consider those things, I'd say. How do I know someone is not just looking to hook up and actually wants to date? For a while, I thought that, you know, someone being on a dating app meant they wanted a girlfriend but it doesn't always mean that like that's why i actually like non-sponsored but i love that hinge does the intentions feature like i had my intention on hinge said set to looking for a long-term relationship i had it set same and i think that that actually helped a lot because people would see me and be like oh okay she doesn't just want to hook up like she wants something serious and I know it definitely like turned me off or turned a lot of other, a lot of people off to me because they're like, this is a lot, but I also met Jack that way. So like I had that set, I had that on my profile when Jack and I were talking. So clearly not everybody's turned off by that or it's just the honesty of it is really important. I need to have clarity. Like I, I can't operate well, like just in my life as a whole, like my normal, my business, everything would suffer if I don't have clarity. Like I need clarity and it's an interesting pairing because I crave clarity and knowing what's going on and knowing what people are feeling, but I also hate confrontation. So it's one of those things where I have to make compromises with myself and be like, okay, I need to figure this out for my own sanity. So conversations are important. <laughs> I think that that's really the only way to know how someone is fully feeling and the next step for you, like if they then tell you like, oh, I'm not looking for something serious, then you decide what you're looking for and if that's compatible with what you're looking for. And I don't know, I'd say just generally though, generally speaking, like what are the signs that someone is looking, for, like any given person on a dating app or beyond is looking for something serious. I'd say it's all about the actions, the effort that they put forth. What are they doing? Not what are they saying, what are they actually doing like physically because of course actions speak louder than words they always say that but like are, what kind of dates are they planning are they introducing you to their friends are they going when you invite them to see your friends are they talking about meeting your parents or like you know stuff like that and that will kind of indicate and that being said though i did see a question someone asked seems like you and jack are moving really fast especially london and your parents and by that they mean like going to London, I'm going to his town and bringing my family and like that whole thing that's happening late March. They said, what feels right? Well, I wouldn't be doing this if it didn't feel right. Like, let's get that straight. I think that timing and the trajectory of someone's relationship, like 
really only makes sense to them. I don't know, and I don't wanna be this person that's like, how dare you? Because I know, I can admit, oh my God, it went fast, or it's going fast. But I'm not getting married anytime soon, okay? Like, we're not living together. I would just like to express that I feel lucky that all the stuff has gone pretty quickly to get us to this point, because I've just craved this my whole life, like being with someone where I feel like our families can get along, I know where they've come from, they know where I've come from, we've both physically been to each other's homes, hometowns. Like that is something I've craved and I'm good with like now we can just coast and chill. You know, because I've wanted to get to this, this point specifically feeling the familiarity aspect and I feel like now I'm like, all right, that's good. We're, we're where I want to be right now. We can now coast, we can now chill and everyone, every couple takes things at their own speed. But no, this feels right to me and I, I personally, I don't, I wouldn't have changed a single thing because I just, I've trusted my gut the entire time. And it's, it feels good to admit that and be like, no, no, this is, I've, I've trusted my gut. And even the times where I've realized and caught myself self-sabotaging, I've then trusted my gut to get me out of it and to continue and it's just i think romantic love and finding yourself in it and finding it like or you know being on the quest to find it any number of those things it all takes a very solid foundation of self-love which i know can we're kind of teetering into the uh cliche category of like is katie gonna throw out a pinterest quote here but i really do think that and i don't even know if it's self-love as much as it is self-understanding and knowing yourself like what I was saying before about how I've caught myself self-sabotaging self and trying to come up with problems where there are no problems. And those, those moments, like I think it's taken a lot of grace, having grace with myself to realize that like I am worthy of these feelings. I don't need to push them away. I have pushed them away in the past and I don't need to do that anymore because I'm in a comfortable, good place. Like I am home. I don't know if that's a good way to describe it. I might watch back this video and be like, what are you talking about, Katie? What are you talking about? I don't know. I mean, I'm new at this. I'm new at talking about all this. It's my first relationship. It's my first literal Valentine's Day. Like, I don't even know what we're doing for Valentine's Day. <laughs> like, I don't even know. All I know is I'm happy and I can do literally anything and be good with that. That honestly does it. Like, I think I answered the majority of these questions that I can answer that I feel confident answering. But honestly, in the next six months, like I'll probably learn so, so much more. I'm just still not over the fact that I'm even making this video. Like I just, this time last year, I was, I, I didn't know what was coming. I didn't know. And I'm very happy that I at least like kept going. Like, I think that the biggest advice I could give or could give my single self is like, don't give up. Like, li and again, so cliche, but don't give up. Like don't give up because they are out there. He or she or whoever is out there. And if you close yourself off and don't open up, don't allow yourself to potentially get hurt, you might never meet them. And I know that that's like harsh, but okay guys, deep ending, my gosh. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. I have no idea how long this is gonna be. I probably did some swift editing because I'm like, I probably droned on and on and some of the bits you're probably like rolling your eyes so far in the back of your head, but I try to keep it real over here, okay? I will never, I, I will always keep it real. And that's that. Thank you guys for watching. Happy month of love. Thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. And I will see you guys all in my next one. Bye.